Well, thank you, everyone, so much for coming. Um, so I just wanted to say a few words about, about faculty, this, uh, the kind of new branding and how we think of uh, the work we're doing these days. So we now talk about our, like, the thing we want to achieve in the world as making artificial intelligence real. Um, basically, we, we believe this is the most important technology of our age, but it won't actually be valuable to people unless it becomes integrated into society. So enhancing products, improving services, saving lives. Uh, we don't want it to just be something that sits in scientific journals. We want it to be kind of in the real world, uh, making things better. Um, and, you know, we've done this in a whole range of circumstances. So uh, uh, for the NHS around um, uh, breast cancer, if anyone got the train uh, from Oxford to London today, uh, hopefully it was on time, and, and that was uh, part of that will be due to the kind of work that we've been doing to help them predict um, the uh, arrivals and, and understand scheduling. Um, and then we're probably most well known for the work around uh, spotting extremist terrorist content online. Uh, so this is detecting Islamic State videos. And actually, I wanted to take a moment uh, today because we were very lucky uh, a few days ago to receive a prize for, for this work. Uh, but unfortunately, um, I, who had nothing to do with the work at all, uh, got to receive it, and the team themselves uh, didn't get the opportunity to have it. So I would like to ask the, the Black Flag team, the, the project team, to come up uh, onto stage. Uh, and if everyone could join me in giving them a round of applause for their... their unbelievable work uh, that they did. So this was um, the, the Counter-Terror Awards uh, for the UK and uh, the biggest contribution of uh, sort of information technology to, to defending against terrorism. And so we see uh, making artificial intelligence real as a kind of component of having three different components. So strategy, skills, and software. And our hope is that as an organization, we can work with you across a broad range of things to make sure that you have everything you need. Because there's a, a tendency for people, you know, in this domain to focus on just the software or just the people. And it's only when you get all three together that you actually uh, can deliver this stuff in the real world. And, of course, uh, we've worked with a huge range of companies now uh, over the last sort of five years in all kinds of different sectors, um, just showing how, how powerful these technologies uh, can be. And, you know, when you hear the fellows' talks and the range of projects that they're working on, you'll, uh, I think you'll understand even more. But today I'd like to talk about something slightly different. Um, so, you know, when we're normally or historically, and in fact a great deal of what's talked about around artificial intelligence is building the capability. Um, but we view this as, uh, as not enough to make artificial intelligence real uh, in the world, um, it has to be safe as well. So, you know, the analogy of very famous Professor Stuart Russell says that when you're thinking about building a bridge, you don't think about building the bridge first and then making it safe afterwards. You just do the two together. Like, building it safely is an inherent part of building it. And we think the same should be true about AI. But truthfully, it's a very, like, it's talked, the ethics of AI are talked about a lot, but we don't think there's a very structured conversation around it. And so we'd like to just talk you through how we think about the safety considerations of AI. So we think the intention of the programmer is very important, whether the kind of person is trying to do the right thing or deliberately malicious. And then the kind of autonomy of the algorithm. So is this uh, a kind of, like, a narrow AI, something that we're in the current, like, kind of currently using where it's human-controlled and done for a very specific purpose, or is this, in the longer term, going to be more general, more autonomous um, uh, kind of agent? And that gives us four boxes. And in each of these boxes, you can put kind of AI failures. So in this sort of top, uh, top malicious and long term, we should be thinking about the kind of dangers around autonomous weapons and how, as a sort of society, as, as, a, as a planet, we're going to... I try to mitigate the possible uh, damages from these things. In the, in the long-term benign, there's just clumsy failures in building autonomous agents. So, you know, you can think of, like, 
say, uh, a cartoon example, a robot that goes to get me coffee, and I tell it to get it coffee as fast as I can, so it just smashes through that door and runs over anyone who's in the way. So I tell it not to run over people and not to smash doors, so it goes through the wall and runs over a cat. And those are actually can be well like that problem of how do you train a kind of reinforcement learning agent to actually have the correct reward function is a very hard and unsolved problem right now. Um, in the malicious and, and more near term, there's the kind of work around uh, that we're doing in um, deep fakes and uh, political disinformation. And in the benign near term, uh, we've got things around fairness and um, uh, explainability. I'm going to talk a bit more about those in a, se in a second. Uh, and of course, out in the long term, in the, in the very long future, there's this sort of stuff around existential risk that uh, you know, philosophers at Oxford and, and people talk about. Our focus is more on these uh, nearer term boxes. So just to give you a sense of the kind of uh, projects that we're doing in each one already, um, I, for those who have heard of deep fakes, um, you'll recognize uh, uh, like this idea of um, AI synthesized videos of public figures. So within sort of three to five years, it's going to be possible to essentially perfectly cre recreate a video of a public figure saying anything you want. That's quite concerning, right? Particularly given the kind of disinformation that goes on in Eastern Europe with Russia like actively trying to under undermine the uh, democracies there. We think that there's a two-pronged strategy to fighting this, a part around educating, so showing people that this is possible, because we know Photoshop can be faked, and we know to think twice if an image um, uh, was, uh, like a, an image we were surprised by was put in front of us. But I don't think most people have the same sense with video. And then, of course, there's detection, so using the kind of technology to actually detect fake videos. In the sort of more long-term and benign uh, category, we've been doing some work uh, to parent uh, algorithms. So this is basically a new way of training reinforcement learning algorithms to, uh, to explore safely, um, to take on board human feedback, and to kind of learn and grow as they develop. And you can actually check out the paper that the guys have published uh, there. And then finally, in the near-term and human-controlled, uh, I'd like to go into a bit more detail because I think this is very, very relevant to the people in this room today. So we think there are three different considerations, fairness, robustness, and explainability that, that need to be factored into building artificial intelligence. So let's start with fairness. What does that really mean? Well, will my model do the right thing? Firstly, has it been legitimately statistically validated? But is it unfairly biased? Is it going to be discriminatory? Is it going to preserve people's privacy? If you train on a, on a data set where there's a single outlier, uh, will people be able to basically figure out things from the, by interrogating the model and learn about that outlier? And we've actually been building these tools so we can now take a sort of unfair classifier and make it fair by making the distributions align. Uh, another... Um, consideration that we have to worry about when we're deploying algorithms in the real world is whether they're robust. So if the data changes underneath my algorithm or if there's like noise in the system, um, you can imagine that your predictions start to go a bit haywire. You know, you can think of like flash crashes in the financial market, I guess that's particularly relevant here, where algorithms interacting with each other create behaviors that we never really anticipated up front. And so we need to be, think, be very thoughtful about the robustness. And finally, the explainability. So it is very hard to imagine a world where uh, AI can be deployed in incredibly valuable, important applications, and then we just say to people, no, no, you can't understand why you didn't get that insurance decision, or you can't understand why we're going to do this operation rather than that operation. It's just a black box. Like, people are going to want and need explanations um, to make this stuff work. So we think this is a very sensible framework for when you guys are thinking about how to make your algorithms uh, safe um, to think along these three categories. And we think they can be built in. So this is what we're particularly excited about. These are quite hard. The, the sort of individual algorithms are quite hard to build um, individually. 
but they should exist as part of every workflow. This should just be something that happens. You know, when you, uh, when you push to production, they should just run through some automated checks. And so we think that, you know, as you start to move towards, uh, you know, life and death decisions being made by algorithms, as we start to move towards billions of dollars being shifted by these things, it just simply has to be the case that we have the same kind of unit checks that we'd have in software development for the models in artificial intelligence. And I think um, there's a lot of sort of negativity around this technology at the moment. Uh, you know, people see AI as a scary new thing and they see these problems of bias as essentially unsolvable. And that's just factually incorrect. Um, you know, for the first time in all of human history, decisions are being made in a way that we can actually understand. The human brain is a black box that we know gives bad explanations for its own behavior. So there's this incredibly optimistic future where we can take this technology and figure out how to genuinely make things safe and like actually build in all of the uh, ethical considerations that we value. With that, I would like to thank you and uh, uh, welcome Jean back to the stage.